Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Beer and Money. My name is Ryan Burklow. And I'm Alex Collins. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about how best to take care of our parents. <laughs> Boy, that feels backwards, right? Doesn't it, it feel like mom and dad are supposed to be taking care of us? Yeah. You know, it's it, it's something that you and I are, you know, dealing with in, in different areas uh, in our lives as, as our parents age, right? That between health um, concerns, between just, just really getting around, physical concerns, um, asset concerns, like the older we get, the older our parents get, the more stuff that we have to handle. And you and I are Gen Xers, right? And I think this is a big thing with Gen X and probably some of the, of the millennials as well, where we've got kids of ourselves, right? And we've got all these things in our mind and, and these activities that we were handling with our kids. And oh, by the way, our parents, our kids' grandparents are also like, involved, but we're starting to notice small things with our parents that are sometimes shocking and we don't know how to approach it or help them, right? Because, you know, I, I can only imagine, you know, Madison coming to me and saying, dad, are you all right? Are you all the way there? Because the last thing we want as parents is for our kids to have to worry about us. Oh, for sure. Oh, and like in a conversation this morning with a client, one of them was saying, thank you. I so appreciate the foundation that you're giving us because we don't get it in school. We don't understand how this stuff works. So this type of you know, planning, this type of knowledge is essential and we don't have another place to get it. Yeah, so we're gonna give you three, th three things to consider when talking to your parents. But before we dive into those three items, Mr. Collins, what are you drinking today? Uh, today, I'm drinking a sour. It's from Avery over in Colorado. Um, so I have not had this sour before. I'm sure I'm going to butcher the name of this, but uh, Rufus Corvus is the uh, the name of it. Um, and it clocks in at uh, just under 7%. Well, um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it to some degree. Uh, I will not, as that's a sour, as any of our listeners have been listening for any amount of time know that I'm not a big fan of sours, but how's, how's it taste to you? It's, it's interesting. It's unique. Um, it's, as you can see, incredibly dark. That is a dark one. Like, like on the it, camera, it kind of looks like a stout almost. I know, right? Um, but uh, it's definitely got that traditional sour taste. Awesome. What's the battle nice. cap rating there? Oh, this is a nine. This is good stuff. Cool. Um, yeah, this is, it was uh, bottled back in 2014. So we'll, we'll see how long this uh, lasts. <laughs> yep. Uh, and if the taste changes throughout the episode. Well, I'm drinking Elysian Dragon's Tooth. It's a stout 8.1% alcohol by volume. Uh, for those watching on YouTube, there is the picture of the can. Um, I've never had this one. Have you had this one before, Alex? I have not. It's your, your classic stout. <clears throat> it's not as heavy as I thought it would be, um, especially at 8.1. Um, so it's a little bit lighter of a stout, like in terms of uh, taste and how it's going down. But it's a solid stout. If I'm giving this a bottle cap rating, I'm probably giving it an 8 out of 10. Um, I'm not the, the biggest drinker of stouts, but I, I can enjoy one, especially come the winter times. And I saw a stout and got me thinking of, of the winter time here. So eight bottle caps out of 10 for me. All right, so let, let's dive into this. Like, this is a, a touchy, like, I'm, I'm even thinking with myself, like, how to have conversations with my parents about different things. And, and we're talking about everything from, like, your parent gets a phone call that someone's trying to, like, essentially, you know, get money out of them, right? It's a fraudulent call to, do you even know what the estate plan, like, what your parents' estate plan looks like and who's responsible for what to what professionals are in their lives and what are they all telling them, right? So at some point, oftentimes, like we have to get involved or we should be involved because it definitely eases issues that will arise maybe during their lifetime or when they pass away. Yeah, I mean, the more proactive we can be on this stuff, the better off we are. 
Um, I can tell you from experience, like right now, there's what about four or five clients that, uh, that I've got that are going through something where like the kids are stepping in and helping out the parents, whether it's stepping in fully stepping, stepping in partially. And like, it's one of those things where for the most part, like these all have like good and happy outcomes. Like it's not something where like mom transferred $600,000 to a random person. Um, like, and I say that because there was an article uh, on MSNBC this morning that was talking about um, how like someone, uh, she was a, a widowed um, single mom um, who was in retirement in her seventies had just transferred her life savings to an outside source uh, in a confidence scandal. And like, had the kids been like ha, the the scammer did a really good job of separating the the parent um the elderly person from their kids um and making sure that they didn't reach out and contact their kids otherwise this likely would have been present prevented um like one of the kids was is a producer for msnbc uh or msn rather so like and they were like yeah like they weren't involved in writing the article but they did connect up uh, to, to have the article written. Well, this stuff can, can get scary, right? Because they can, you know, AI can take your voice. Like, like imagine this, y your parents receive a phone call and the voice sounds like you, you're the child. Like it sounds like you asking for money. Mm -hmm. Like that literally can occur nowadays. Now I haven't heard it in the news per se, but you know, your scam that you just brought up, that can go to the next level where it sounds like legitimate. Oh, this is my child calling me for money. Yeah, I'm going to take care of them. And yeah. that's a scary thought. So what I'm saying, like, as Alex said, we have to be proactive, right? And something that just occurred to me, Alex, that we didn't talk about in, the, in this podcast, it just occurred to me that because of AI, like we might want to set, have a, a call with our parents and almost sound, uh, set like, like a password up. Like we have to say something, right? Like Goonies or, you know, whatever the password is so that your parents know that it's you, right? And the only, and obviously you don't broadcast this, but now they know it's a legitimate call rather than an AI call. Right. Yeah. Set something up where like anytime you're going to talk about like any money thing or something, like have some reference or something um, like Goonies is a good one. That was just a great movie from the 80s. The Triple Shuffle. Come on. <laughs> I love that. Love that movie. Um, <laughs> I've got all the quotes going on in my head now. So communicate with your parents, right? Like that might be easier said than done. You know, there, there are times that we... <laughs> us kids, we don't really want to communicate with our parents because maybe we're sick of that phone call to talk about how to do the email for the 50th time. But you have to know what's going on. And you have to also, this also allows you to recognize maybe stuff that we don't want to recognize. Like maybe our parents are starting to be more and more forgetful. Yeah, or, you know, whatever, whatever, like there are a host of different things that potentially could could occur, right? I mean, um, recently my my mom gave up driving, um, and like it was something where I mean that was a, a decision that that she made proactively, um, as opposed to like my dad or my sister or I taking away keys or anything of that nature, um, and like I I still think she's capable of driving. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's nice to know that there's one less thing that we have to worry about. Um, and so, like, these are the types of things that we need to try and figure out as our parents age. How do we recognize these things? And when do, like, when do these things, uh, like, these are all uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. Heck, these are uncomfortable for you and I, and you and I are well-versed in finance and a lot of the, you know, d difficult discussions that have to be had. Um, we have them on a regular basis because a lot of the discussions we have with clients, like we're talking about, hey, what happens at end of life? What happens if we get sick or hurt? What happens if bad things occur, or whatever the bad thing is? Um, yep. Because that's an important part of financial planning is making sure that in the event that something bad happens, we didn't just tear up the entire plan and throw it away. 
It's be, so another piece I, I brought up, communicate with your parents, communicating with your siblings or, or other family members that are also involved in some way, shape or form, like everyone needs to be on the same page. Right. And so I, I can't stress that enough. You, you, the last thing you want is one sibling saying X and the other sibling saying Y, like that's not going to be helpful uh, in the conversation. So make sure you're on the same page. And then the last piece that we wanted to bring up is, and this the proactive proactivity is making sure that a your parents have their legal documents in place. Yes, right. Power of attorneys, health directives, <clears throat> wills, trusts. Making sure that they're they're aligned, right? Because I can't tell you how many times. Like I bet you anything, Alex. If we, if we were to poll our listeners and we say how many of you know whether or not your parents have an estate plan document in place. I bet you anything 50% don't know for certain. And then to take that a step further, how many of you actually know what you're responsible for? Were you labeled as the trustee or the executor or what have you, right? So what are your responsibilities? And that needs to be communicated because the last thing you want, is, so now let's take the, the parent's position for a second. The last thing you want is your kids arguing over stuff. Right, well, and like another thing, thing to consider when was the last time that that plan right those documents were up was it when you were four years old <laughs> was it before your brother or sister was born like yep. like there are so many different examples that i have of like parents going oh yeah we took care of that after the first kid was oh we've got three kids we should update that like yeah like I had this yeah. conversation with my parents the other day, you know, for those of you who don't know, my, my brother passed away in 2019. His name was all over their documents. And so they're getting that straightened out. And, you know, we're, we had conversations with Diane's parents last year where their, her parents got their will updated because they hadn't had it done since like 1986 or something like that. So, right. Th these are things that we need to make sure we bring up with our parents, right? And make sure you're aware of what the responsibilities are. And make sure you understand like two other things that are absolutely critical and vital. One, where does the, where do those documents exist? <laughs> <laughs> Cause like in the event that something happens to mom or dad, like you need to be able to figure out where those documents are and whom to call. Yep. So that's the second part of that is like, the, as much as humanly possible without putting yourself in just a ridiculously awkward situation. Know who your parents' professionals are. Yeah, which is number two. So we're talking about being proactive. So number two is who do your parents work with? Who's their estate yeah. planning attorney? Who's their financial advisor? Who's their CPA? Or maybe they have an insurance agent or an investment manager, You know, depending on the different titles that are out there. But who, who are those professionals? And maybe it might make sense for you to be in a meeting. Like if your parents have a financial advisor, it might make sense to sit in a meeting with them to make sure that A, you know what's going on and B, that financial advisor knows you in the event of something occurs, right? There, there are so many different variables that it could occur and make sure that everyone has had somewhat of a conversation with each other is huge and coordinating all of that stuff. I mean, we're in the middle of a situation right now where an existing client of mine, um, like they have been named as like the executor and main person in charge of their parents. Um, and they don't have the power to change anything. Hmm. And now parents are incapacitated. And there are changes that should be made because the document that they're working off of at this point is 19 years old. And they yeah. can't up they can't update it because like nobody is able to be cognitive to like make a decision. And the kids weren't given the power to be able to change or modify the documentation. And there's like that's not necessarily saying that your kids should have the ability to document to to manage documentation and things of that nature. But at the same time, like there are some fairly significant unforeseen events that have occurred in this family's life. And now they don't want certain things to occur and they have no power or ability to stop it. Yep. Yep. So be involved, 
right? We're not com- telling you to go in and, and be the boss. We're just asking you to go in and be aware of what all is there, right? Which takes us to number three is, do you know what your parents' wishes are? Hey, right? But, but hey, I had this conversation you- with with Marshall the other day, which is really, he always makes jokes like, um, you know, Diane gets, you know, 50% of the house or what have you, but I don't get anything. And, I, and you know, he's got some autograph memorabilia stuff as well, which he knows that I collect. And so he constantly like says, that's not going to you. That's going to somewhere else, which it's all jokes. But what was really interesting is what was very important to him was that the kid, their grandkids' education was funded by them. Now it's not awesome. funded up front by them. It's going to be it's going to be almost reimbursed by them. Cool. And that was extremely important to them. And th- th- luckily, uh, you know, Marshall, uh, my my wife's dad, was very upfront about this. And so, you know, I'm aware of that as well as, you know, he just got his, his legal documents done. So we actually asked him, hey, where are those documents in the event that we actually needed them? Because can you imagine, you know, if they've got a 4,000 square foot house in the Bear Creek area, right? And all of us have, like, when you go to your parents' house, you know how much stuff that they have. Can you imagine trying to find paper in the midst of everything that they own? Right, like, how are you going to go find the estate planning documents? Well, one thing that I know about. Marshall is Marshall loves paper. Yes. He loves paper. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so it, it's, this is, do you know your parents' plan? Like that's, that's not from the standpoint of like, and I think we get weird. I get weirded out too. Don't get me wrong. Like it's a weird question to ask because you don't want them to think like you're, you're like waiting for them to keel over so you can get assets. That that's not the point of asking the question. It's 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 remembering your parents. It's their last wishes and making sure that they're fulfilled. It's it's right. It's it's a memory of them, and that's what's important about that. And and so here's maybe a couple tricks or tips on how to like bring up some of this converse, these conversations. Um, use an anecdote. Mm. and like heck if you don't have one use us as the example where we're telling you about like either it's a real or a fictitious person um like we can't give out any of our clients information so the stories that we're telling here are all real stories but no names are being given with the exception of family um but like give an example of like hey like so a friend of a friend their parents died and they were having a hard time finding the documentation or that like it took forever to settle their estate or like they went through this insert problem here, whatever problem you want it to be. Um, Yep. And it doesn't even have what's, what's great about that. And I love they brought up the anecdote part because whatever you bring up allows you to talk into everything else. Uh Uh-huh. Because they go hand in hand. So all you do is bring up one item. It's not that you have to bring up, well, let me talk about all of the different things that we need to talk about. It's no, let me bring up this one thing. And then if your parent goes, I don't know, that enable, that opens up the conversation and say, hey, maybe we should figure this out. Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it fixed. Let's get it figured out. Um, and like ultimately, whether it's you or whether it's them, like you should have somebody quarterbacking all of these things for you, helping figure out like, okay, what are the things we need to do first, second, and third, even if it's not them as a professional, for example, if it's your financial advisor, that's quarterbacking it. Great. Like, okay, they're going to ask, they should be asking questions around like taxation and estate planning documents and things of this, that nature. Um, And they should be doing this proactively. They should be making sure that they are reaching out to you with, hey, here's what we need to do. Here's when we need to do it. Here's why we need to do it. And doing so proactively to try and make sure that things are addressed uh, uh, appropriately and ahead of time. Because the last thing in the world that it, it, like anybody wants is to try and do this when everyone's hair is on fire. When there's already a problem, whether it's trying to figure out whether 
mom or dad is mentally capable or needs to go into an assisted living facility or needs help with the daily activities of life or can't remember uh you know there's there's an acronym that both sides of of my family use uh and it's uh um crs can't remember <laughs> stuff um and crp like, can't remember poop <laughs> sure <laughs> uh, yes that one um and, and like they'll both reference this but it's then like okay make sure that you have the follow-up conversation of like okay yeah. got it so if you can't remember stuff now what happens when there's an issue and we need to like figure out where your documents are or be introduced to your cpa or like figure out any of these important professionals that like have some understanding of like what the plan was it's better if you can figure out the plan and be involved in that ahead of time but you at least need to know who the professionals are and ideally create somewhat of a relationship with those professionals ahead of time yeah i look the, the point of this episode is have conversation with your parents right use the anecdote that we mentioned like hey i heard the other day that this happened out of curiosity, are you all set up? That opens the door and now you're off and running and, and getting that all handled. So that was the whole reason for this episode. We've been dealing with it more and more because I think Alex and I at our age now and the, the people that we work with, they, they, you know, they tend to be, they tend to look like us and they tend to, you know, have aging parents where this is a, a primary conversation to have. Which takes us, which we didn't really plan for, but I'm going to throw it your way anyways. I'm going to throw you in the fire here to the question of the day, Mr. Collins. Our question today is, have you had a conversation with your parents about their plans? So that's a rhetorical question. But if you have specific questions about this type of stuff, head over to beerandmoney.net and there's a top of the page you can say, contact us. And you can ask us those questions. Uh, or it might even spur another episode uh, for us to talk into about the, those those questions. Look, we start we started beer and money. Really, it started when we went to an Amazon campus and we bought everyone a beer and we just had a, a frank conversation about money, education. But it's grown to this podcast, and the reason it grow, grew to the podcast is we want to help you think differently about your money so that you can live the life that you want with your family, not stressed about money, engaged, and like present with your family. So if you got anything out of this, share it with your friends, maybe even share it with your parents, right? Might be another way to open up that door because that's the whole purpose of the of this podcast. We hope this episode was valuable for you. And as always, Mr. Collins. Cheers. This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not to be construed as tax, legal, or investment advice. Although the information has been gathered from sources believed to be reliable, please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon only when coordinated with individual professional advice. Guest speakers and their firms are not affiliated with or endorsed by Park Avenue Securities, Guardian, or quantified financial partners, and opinions stated are their own. Guardian, its subsidiaries, agents, and employees do not provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. Consult your tax, legal, or accounting professional regarding your individual situation. All investments and investment strategies contain risk and may lose value. This material is intended for general public use. By providing this content, Park Avenue Securities LLC is not undertaking to provide investment advice or a recommendation for any specific individual or situation or to otherwise act in a fiduciary capacity. Please contact a financial representative for guidance and information that is specific to your individual situation. Ryan and Alex are registered representatives and financial advisors of Park Avenue Securities, LLC. OSJ 200 Market Street, Suite 1850, Portland, Oregon 97201. Phone number 503-221-1226. Securities products and advisory services offered through Park Avenue Securities, member FINRA, SIPC. 
Financial representatives of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, Guardian, New York, New York. Park Avenue Securities is a wholly owned subsidiary of Guardian. Quantified Financial Partners is not an affiliate or subsidiary of Park Avenue Securities or Guardian. Ryan Burklow, CA Insurance License, number 0K24924. Alexander Collins, CA Insurance License, number 0H24806. Pinpoint number 2023-163378, expiration October 2025.